<laughs> so I can see everyone. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, there we go. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you, Pam. Um, oh, and one little correction. I, I was a GMB member, but I worked for Unison. So, yeah, so there's a connection with... No, no, no. Um, it's a long time ago, but it's a connection with both unions that I'm very proud of. Um, as you've heard, I'm Sharon Hodgson. I'm the member for Washington and Sunderland West. I don't know if anybody's from over in my patch. I can go with Nicola Rizzo. I've seen Nicola. Oh, yes, and Julie. Um, anybody else? Washington, Sunderland West? No? Oh, well, there's two in the room. That's good, anyway. Um, so, uh, are the rest from other parts of Sunderland, or are we from wider? Is everyone from Sunderland? Sunderland. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, that's very good. South and South Tyneside as well, yeah. Great. Oh, well, it's fantastic to see such a, a good turnout, as Pam said. And um, thank you to John and Gemma for, for kicking us off so well with the, the local and the regional perspective. Um, so and it's a, a genuine pleasure for me to be here talking to you about the NHS. As you, uh, Pam introduced me, I'm Shadow Public Health Minister, um, and I have been since... Um, Jeremy asked me to take on the job. Gosh, she's had a year now. Is it over a year? Time's flying. Anyway, I, th I, th I think it's definitely over a year from you know the last uh, when we had the last leadership stuff going on. So um, and we've had an election in the middle of all of that. So um, and we might have another election soon. Let's hope we do for the sake of the NHS, which I'm going to come on to. The scale and the support shown for um, this recently set up campaign group just shows how strongly local people across the North East, as we've heard from John Feel about our NHS and how important its future is. And as a Shadow Health Minister, I know all too well how damaging the Tory policies are towards our NHS and its groups like this one, and um, working alongside the Labour Party in Parliament and across the country that are helping us to hold the government to account for their actions. And in my contribution this evening, I've been asked to talk about the national perspective when it comes to our NHS, and there's nothing more pressing right now than the utterly shameful winter crisis that is engulfing our NHS, and as we've all been sadly watching on our TVs or seeing from within, um, for those of you who work in the NHS, this winter crisis is unlike any that we've seen before, and that's not just me saying it as well. Come on to, and the blame lies squarely at the feet of the Health Secretary, who has presided for a, a serious amount of time now over serious underfunding, understaffing, and underappreciation of our fantastic <coughs> NHS. Labour have repeatedly dragged ministers to the House to hold them to account on this. It's almost you know, a week go, goes by when we're um, trying to get an urgent question or a, a statement or a debate. Um, on something connected with the NHS. And in the first week back in Parliament, in the first couple of days, we had an urgent question where our excellent Shadow Health Secretary, John Ashworth, and I hope you all think he's doing a really, really good job. I can't tell, I've worked for a number of um, uh, other MPs who've been, you know, sort of um, uh, in whatever team I've been in, and Andy Burnham, Stephen Twigg, um, Lucy Powell, Gloria De Piero. And I, can't, I can tell you, honestly, in, for, and when we were in government, um, under people who were then ministers, the, the, you'd go a long way to find anyone who works harder than John. Right the way over the Christmas, he just never stopped. And I kept, you know, saying, are you actually having any, any time off? He really, really does um, battle on all of our behalves. And at the urgent question, he took, really did take the, the government to task on um, the dismal actions, and all the while, Jeremy Hunt, um, wasn't in the chamber. I don't know if you were watching and you noticed it was um, uh, the guy who's been sacked now, Dunn, Philip Dunn, who took the urgent question because do you want to know where Jeremy Hunt was? He was staging his own sit-in in Downing Street trying to hang on to his job, which he did instead of actually being in the house, um, you know, defending his actions and what he'd done to the NHS. Um, but save his job he has, and we're all going to have to pay the consequences for that because he has a plan. He obviously shared that plan with the Prime Minister, and she obviously accepted that plan, which is um, going to be her undoing as well, because that means she's um, condoning what he obviously has in store, which we all know is more privatisation. <coughs> and, you know, if he put as much effort into saving our NHS as he did into saving his own career, 
then part of me thinks that the NHS wouldn't be in the state that it's currently in. And as the age old saying goes, and you know it, we could also do it as a little song, a little rhyme, you can never touch the, trust the Tories with the NHS. And I think to that we can now add um, for future, especially Jeremy Hunt. Now many people are you know, probably getting sick of the constant use of statistics to highlight the scale of the winter crisis, but they really must never be forgotten because that is where we can prove that this is the worst it's ever been. Um, and we should never stop repeating them. The Tories have literally starved our NHS of resources and it's a deliberate strategy. Um, he's wrote a book as well, hasn't he? Jeremy Hunt. He's got it all down the book. He knows exactly what he's doing. So this has meant that this winter alone, 75,000 patients have waited in the back of an ambulance for over 30 minutes, often in excruciating pain. Over one third of England's children's care units were 100% full. 100%. With not one single spare bed for new admittances. And that figure should be 85%. That's the figure. And that's full. When the NHS is at 85% full bed occupancy, that's what they call full. It's now at 100. I mean, it's just, it's just not good. Um, a total of just over 1,000 people have been hospitalised with flu, almost three times more than the 366 admitted during the same period in 2016-17. And our analysis has shown that there is a workforce crisis with 100,000 vacant posts across the NHS. Um, across NHS England, so that's not counting Wales and Scotland. There's 40,000 nurse vacancies, 12,000 nurse and support staff vacancies, and 11,000 scientific, technical and therapeutic staff vacancies. Now, we no one wanted to talk about why there's the vacancies. If you were watching the news yesterday, you'll understand why, because nurses are leaving in their droves, other professionals are leaving the NHS because it is just such an awful, stressful environment to work in. Um, there's also the, um, the Brexit angle, because a lot of the European <laughs> nurses, if they get a chance of promotion or to go back home um, to Europe, they're taking that option. And it seems astounding that the Prime Minister has said, um, in light of all of this, that the NHS is better prepared for the winter than ever before. She stood there, she's been on the Andrew Marr saying that, she stood in Parliament saying that. And, you know, but are we even surprised or shocked when this Prime Minister is prone to saying, nothing has changed, nothing has changed, and sticking her head in the sand? <coughs> and the beggar's belief that the Tories believe that the NHS is only facing seasonal struggles and believe the NHS is in good health, with the key targets which help us to gauge our NHS's health are not being met. And it's worrying right now, as we said about bed, as I just said about bed occupancy, because it stands overall across the NHS now at 95%, when it should be 85%. And the gold standard AMA four hour waiting target is now at 85%, when it should be 95%. So you could say they're meeting the statistics, but they've just got them the wrong way around. They're meeting the wrong ones. So this whole saga is just. It's not funny at all, it's absolutely staggering. But what should shame the Tories, although I don't think it ever will, is that in the 70th year of our NHS, as we've heard and as we're all so proud of, it started the year marred by story after story of ambulances crewing up outside of hospitals, um, trusts urging patients not to go to a a because they were full to capacity and co couldn't cope, and operations being cancelled. And the warning signs have been there for months, if not years. Back in October, Jim Mackey, head of NHS Improvement, told the House, Co House of Commons Health Select Committee, and I quote, we are running tighter than any of us would really want to. So it will be difficult. It will be very tight over the winter. And this is from one of the top people within the NHS. And the Tories turned a blind eye and ignored these warning signs. But Labour has also driven home the need for this winter crisis to be prevented and avoided at all costs so that patients can have the full confidence that they should be able to have in our NHS. At the general election, Labour committed to an additional £6 billion being pumped into our NHS. That's what we said we would do. That's what Simon Stephen asked for and that's what we committed to. But um, 
We also said we would make sure our NHS had the money to continue to be the jewel in the crown of our public services. And even back in October 2017, John Ashworth was calling on the government to direct emergency funding towards the NHS with a bailout of 500 million. Remember when he was saying that? That was way before the, the government had even started to think about it. If they were planning for the best win you know, winter period ever, they should have been saying, oh, we're going to do better than that, we're going to do this, but they just you know, didn't want to talk about it. It was all ignored and even ridiculed by the Tories, who yet again showed their disregard for the importance of protecting our NHS. Um, but we know exactly what the Tories um, will say, which is that they've moved funding towards the NHS. But does anyone really believe that the additional £1.6 billion which um, they promised will help address these pres pressures? Because it really is paltry in comparison to what the NHS needs. Simon Stephen said before the budget, he, urged, he needed four billion there and then, four billion, and they got 1.6. It is also concerning that NHS trusts who had heard this announced, and had probably let out a sigh of, sigh of relief, thinking, oh, well, we're going to get 1.6 at least, were not informed of the allocation until a month later. So the budget was on the 22nd of November, and the trusts weren't receiving or even being told till into December, but they weren't actually receiving that money some until just days before Christmas. So it's not surprising that NHS providers turned around and said that this money had come very late, again a quote, very late to be used to maximum effect. It's all very well seeing you're going to get some money, but until you've actually got it or you're told how much it's going to be, you can't actually use it or spend it. Chris Hobson, as I'm sure you saw on the TV um, just last week, Chief Executive of NHS Providers, also provided a damning analysis of the reality that our NHS finds itself in. And he said, and I quote, for the first time since targets were introduced, despite best efforts, last year the NHS missed all four of the long-standing acute and ambulance performance standards. That's the four-hour a &E standard missed, the 18-week elective surgery standard missed, the 62-day cancer standard, which this is when it starts to get really scary for people, missed. And the ambulance response time target missed. The first time since those targets existed that they've all been missed like that. And the Tories say that they're better prepared than ever. So it's culminated in NHS staff describing, and I've just picked two, I've got pages and pages and pages to choose from, describing the state of their A&A departments as third world or never seen anything like this before and a lot worse things that I could say. This has meant trusts have had to delay all elective surgeries which is estimated at 55,000 operations. That's 55,000 people, 55,000 families, you know, could be thousands and thousands of jobs that people are, um, you know, struggling to... to maintain with well while they're waiting for and you know tell their job oh you know I want it next week off well actually I don't know when now you know all all of that they've been told they're going to be delayed till the end of January but there's actually no sign of when those operations are going to be rescheduled because you know the the operations that would be taking place in February still need to take place in February. So these January people where, where are they going to be moved? If they move to February, where do you move the February people to? So you can just see the knock-on effect. <coughs> so it's going to leave patients living in pain for far longer than they should. And God forbid if we see any fatalities. None of us want to see that even, <coughs> um, you know, the, to use against the Tories. We do not want to go <coughs> there. We want people to get their operations in good time. But this crisis is not over yet. John Appleby of the respected think tank, the Nuffield Trust, said two weeks ago, the sobering reality is that winter for the NHS has hardly started. People who work in the NHS and say this every year say February is the peak. <coughs> so, you know, oh my God, what are we going to say come February? It's really worrying, it's absolutely troubling, and it's totally <coughs> shameful. We cannot allow this to continue. And that is why the work that all of these groups do, that keep our NHS public groups across, across the country, 
it are so valuable and especially this new local group which will help to campaign and raise awareness amongst local people about our NHS and to engage residents in defending our NHS before it is completely run into the ground and privatised. Labour are committed to giving our NHS the support it needs you know, could say under Jeremy Corbyn, more so than ever, ever before. And in its 70th year, we shouldn't be seeing this precious public service being run into the ground, but instead we should see it, the investment in it that we need that would see it through another 70 years and then another 70 years. People may say that this, and that this is often a, a misquoted line attributed to Nye Bevan, who um, you heard is the you know the architect and the founder of the NHS. And this this quote, I believe he said it, but the thrust of it remains true. And he said, I quote, the NHS will last as long as there's folk with the faith to fight for it. And I'm up for that fight, and I know that all of you in this room are too. So let's go from here and fight for our NHS, because that's what it is. Let us protect and defend it at all costs. Not just for those people who rely upon it now, but for all those future generations who will rely upon it too. Thank you. I'm going to go straight into questions because it's a horrible night. I don't know if you've noticed.